Jackson's Art, according to their website, is a well-established maker and supplier of art materials. From my knowledge, they and Cassart are two of the most affordable art supply sellers in the UK. I have never ordered from Cassart, so I can't vouch for them, but the two times that I have ordered from Jackson's Art, I've been quite happy with their service. For this video, I have combined my last purchase and my most recent purchase to provide you with a huge haul. Before we begin though, please note that this is not a sponsored video, not that I have enough subscribers or views to justify a sponsorship, and two, I have never used about 90% of the products I have bought, so I can't vouch for the quality of these products just yet. On both occasions that I have ordered from Jackson's Art, they have packaged the items very securely with bubble and plastic wrap that I have not had any issues with damaged products. So let's begin with my first group of purchases. The first purchase is the Jackson's Wood drawing board. This measures at 87cm by 61cm, which can fit the paper sizes up to A1. I'm a little conflicted as to whether I will be happy with this purchase, as the surface is grittier than I expected it would be, especially as my intent behind buying this product was to prevent the texture from my work surface from transferring to my artwork. We'll see though, if the drawing board still helps in that regard. The next item is the Jazz drawing board clips. These were not packaged securely, they were free to move about, but that's not an issue as they're not products that can get damaged easily. They are made of steel and can be bought individually or in a group of four like I did here. The next product was supposed to be what was described on their website as the Jackson's Black A3 archival box. What I received instead was the Sea White archival box. This doesn't bother me too much because the products are identical and it could be that Jackson's bought from Sea White and planned to put their own branding on the product, which is a common commercial practice. But then there's a part of me that wonders if they had intentionally sent the Sea White box as a replacement because they didn't have the Jackson's box in stock. If so, it's not the first time they have done this if the review I had read on Google Plus is anything to go by, and if they did indeed do this, then it's not exactly a good thing. My own personal view is that if a product which has been sold is later found to be out of stock, then the better practice is to contact the buyer and ask if they want a refund, a substitution with another product, or for them to wait for the product to arrive to dispatch it. Cancelling the unavailable product without contacting the buyer directly first is irritating but also acceptable. So is perhaps delaying dispatching the item until it's in stock. However, what is never acceptable is substituting the item with a similar product, especially if it's of lower value than what was paid, without getting the buyer's express permission first. In my case, the archival box is identical to the one described on the site, so it's very possible that they mistakenly included the wrong brand in the description, or it could have been on purpose, who knows, either way it's not problematic for me. I feel like I should inform you though that the review on Google Plus did mention that an item of lower value than what was paid was sent as a substitution without informing the buyer first, so there's that. The box itself stores works up to A3 size and is acid free and therefore archival. It looks just as sleek and professional in person as it does on the website. Just be aware though that the black canvas cloth covering does pick up dust and debris quite easily. Putting that aside though, I think this is the perfect box to store the original illustrations for my children's book, which is the purpose behind me buying it. Next we have a product that I repurchased and therefore I can vouch for its quality and that's the Maypac A3 Jet Archival Portfolio Sleeves. As you can see they were packaged inside a large plastic wrap along with a sheet of drawing paper. Both arrived undamaged. The thickness of the plastic is 40 microns which is fine for me because I simply wanted them as double protection for my illustrations before I store them in the box, but if you're looking for plastic sleeves which are thick then this may not be the product for you, but there is a 150 micron version available as well. It probably goes without saying but this is also acid free. They also come with black paper inserts which feel like very 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 thin sugar paper. I thought that was a nice touch, but that might be because I'm attracted to sleek, professional-looking designs, which is exactly what the sleeves look like with those inserts. The next group of purchases are archival drawing paper. I have been attempting to find archival paper that works well with graphite pencils for the longest time, but so far relying on other artists' views has only led to me purchasing paper that isn't right for me. So this time, I'm going to pick out my paper the old-fashioned way, through trial and error. 
The first group of drawing papers that I have chosen to test are 1. The Stonehenge Fine Art Paper, which I bought in a sheet size 56 by 76 centimeters. It's 250 GSM in weight and therefore the heaviest paper in the group. It's also described as having a smooth slash vellum surface, vellum meaning textured. Sounds a bit contradictory, but we'll see how it holds up in my Let's Test series. Second, we have the Strathmore Bristol paper with a vellum surface. If you've seen my last video, you will know that I've already done a Let's Test with this using graphite pencils. My slight disappointment with this paper is what prompted me to bulk purchase the different papers in this haul in the first place. Thirdly, we have the Strathmore drawing paper with a medium surface. This is a part of the 400 series. The paper size is 8 by 10 inch, which is slightly smaller than A4. The pad comes with 24 sheets with each weighing 130 GSM. It also has a tearaway section where the paper has been perforated. Fourth, we have the De La Brownie fine grain drawing paper. This is in the size A4, weighs 120 GSM and comes in a gummed paper pad format. Fifth is the Windsor and Newton drawing and sketching paper. This includes cartridge paper with a medium surface. On the inside of the front cover, it explains that a medium surface is an attractive textural grain surface ideal for pencil, colored pencil, pastel, and charcoal. It's A4 in size and includes 25 sheets of 220 GSM weighted paper. On the front cover, it also includes a list of mediums which should work on this paper, which in addition to those mentioned includes oil pastel, a light wash and crayon. On the back cover, it also adds that the paper has a strong surface for repeated working and erasing. Out of all of the paper descriptions, this one does sound most ideal for my purpose, so I'm looking forward to doing a let's test on this. Sixth, we have the Fabriano Academia drawing paper. This comes in a pack of 100 loose sheets with each weighing 200 GSM. The size is A4. On Jackson's website, it states that this paper is recommended for drawing with pencil, charcoal, pastel, colored pencil, and ink, and that it's also suitable for gouache. Seventh is the Stonehenge Fine Art Paper, which I got in the adorable 5x7 inch size. It includes 15 sheets weighing at 250 GSM each. On the website, it's described as having a smooth slash vellum surface, which is suitable for pastel, pencil, charcoal, acrylics, and watercolor. Finally, we have the Snowden cartridge drawing paper in the size A3 and weighing at 130 GSM each. These come as loose sheets, and I bought a pack of 100, despite what it says on that label. Jackson's website describes it as being ideal for watercolour, drawing and many printing processes including etching, silkscreen including water-based silkscreen and offset lithography. The final group of purchases mainly revolve around watercolour painting and coloured pencils. Firstly, we have the Windsor & Newton Professional Watercolours in a set of 24 half pans. I knew they were going to be small, but I was taken aback by just how teeny-weeny the half pans and even the metal case were. Regardless, I am a firm believer that as long as you are not being scammed, that you get what you pay for, and I have complete faith that these paints will be worth their price. These were ordered off of Amazon, and the colours you received seem to be based off of whatever happens to be in the palette you are given. And I say that because it appears that not everyone gets the same colours. The ones I received were Windsor Yellow, Lemon Yellow, Aurelin, I think it's pronounced, Windsor Orange, Windsor Red, Permanent Alizarin Crimson, Permanent Rose, Windsor Violet, Cerulean Blue, Windsor Blue in brackets Green Shade, French Ultramarine, Prussian Blue, Olive Green, Permanent Sap Green, Viridian, Yellow Ochre, Raw Sienna, Burnt Sienna, Raw Umber, Burnt Umber, Payne's Grey, Indigo, Ivory Black and Chinese White. The set also comes with a leaflet containing swatches and light fastness ratings of all 96 colours available in the range. All the colours that I received are classified as either A meaning permanent or AA meaning extremely permanent which I'm satisfied with. I'm also happy with the selection of colours given in my set as I did read of people receiving not enough variation in their sets. Next we have two separate set of brushes which I bought off of the eBay seller Artist Own Work. I purchased these such a long time ago that the packages are now deceased. The white brushes are the Royal and Langnickel Golden Taclan brush set. The black ones are the Royal and Langnickel Majestic Artist brushes meant for watercolour and acrylics. The bristles are also made out of Taclan for these. A long while back you may remember my inking journey videos. In one of them I mentioned that I wanted to purchase a sable brush. 
brush. Since then, however, I have developed a brain and realised that sable brushes are made from real fur. I don't want to contribute to the fur industry, so I went on the hunt for alternative materials that could mimic a sable brush. I came across a synthetic fibre called Taclon, which was originally designed to behave like a sable brush, and as a result, I found these brushes and bought them. I still haven't used these brushes, so I can't say how good they are, and I will never be able to say if they truly mimic the sable brushes, as I don't plan on ever buying them. Next we have the Stabilo Fineliners in a set of 25. These were necessary, as I didn't have all the colours I needed to outline my children's book illustrations. I have chosen to take inspiration from the likes of Disney, in that I am outlining the art with colour, rather than in pure black like comic books. Next is the Textured Fixative by Aliona Nicholson. This is supposed to add texture to the paper so you can add a couple more layers of pencil before the paper will take no more. Moving swiftly on, we have the Gamsel Odorless Mineral Spirit. I've used a small amount of this to blend coloured pencils and so far I am loving it. I especially like the fact that I don't feel lightheaded when using it. Moving on again, we have a selection of polychromos. These are the colours being used up the fastest in my children's book illustrations. The first book takes place at the park, hence why there's so many green pencils. I also bought a set of Prismacolor colourless blenders, which works so much better than the Darwin ones, although I still prefer using a white pencil to blend rather than a colourless blender. And finally, I bought a set of drawing tools from Jackson's Art. This includes a sandpaper pointer, a sharpener, a kneaded eraser, a stainless steel erasing shield, two blending stumps, three tortillions, and a chamois which I had no idea was made from sheepskin. That is until I took it out of the packet for the first time while taping this footage and the smell hit me like a brick. I can only describe that smell as rancid. It definitely got my gag reflex going. So that's all I have for this haul. It's not the most interesting video ever, but I do enjoy watching hauls myself, so I figured maybe there are people out there who would enjoy watching my haul. So anyway, that's all I have for you guys. Let me know in the comments below if there's anything that you have bought recently that you're excited to use or anything that you're saving up to get in the future, because I would love to hear that. And thank you guys for watching, and I will see you next time.